Now you had mentioned, and I mean, you were right to point out that uh, from a you know from a sort of a general philosophical perspective, certainly Pope Francis is not wrong to say that the Church uh, needs to be scientific. Uh, right. I'm certainly not saying I'm certainly not saying we're going to reject science. The, right. The, yes. The point here isn't to say well you have to if you're going to be Catholic you have to reject science. Not at all. As I as I pointed out, John Paul II in Theology of the Body says you know, is, is very much pro-science, but his point is that science, that genuine science, is not going to um, uh, contradict our faith. Uh, of what, you know, what the church traditionally teaches is that um, the truths that come from science or the truths that come from empirical uh, work um, and the truths that come from divine revelation all have a common source, mm -hmm. God, yes. right? And so ultimately those truths, the truths of science and the truths of our faith cannot be in conflict with one another. That's, that's the philosophical answer. That's the standard answer. That's, and that's also the answer that John Paul II would, would give. And that's in fact the answer that he gives in the theology of the body. There isn't going to be a conflict. Yeah. And so, and so that's really the answer. The answer to the German bishops is, excuse me, um, if you're doing your homework right, you would understand that the truths that are revealed in the Bible are not going to be uh, contradicted by science. So if you're finding science that's contradicting it, maybe there's something wrong with the science. And if you look on New Walden, you'll see that I actually look at the scientific research that these people are talking about. They're talking about Sigmund Freud. Uh, Sigmund Freud has been discredited on so many levels for, right. for so long, and I actually address this uh, in my, I address this in my first book, actually, uh, his whole theory of the passions and that his idea that um, if you deny your passions, they are, your passions are only going to get stronger and harder to control. This is his critique of Christian asceticism. According to him, Christian asceticism makes you psychologically warped because you can't handle the um, uh, you you can't handle the pressure of mounting uh, these mounting uh, sexual urges. That's you know that's right. that was Sigmund Freud's argument. And when the sexual abuse scandal broke, a lot of people said, "Aha, this yep. proves Freud's theory." <laughs> well, but that's not it couldn't have been <laughs> nothing could have been further from the truth. Um, actually current, and, and so this is when in my first book I get into current uh, neuroscientific research, what they found is it's just the opposite. The dopamine reward system actually shows that as you deny your desires, as you engage in uh, the habitual practice of self-denial, of ascetical discipline, um, what happens is the dopamine reward system, we don't have time to get into all this, but the dopamine reward system actually relaxes and what happens is your, de your desires actually uh, uh, become uh, easier to manage. They actually uh, calm down. And so uh, neuroscience, and this is, this is the point that I make in my book that shows that John Paul II's uh, prediction came true. Um, the church actually teaches that you gain self-control through the practice of asceticism and uh, contemporary neuroscience has proven that with its research on the dopamine reward system. So Freud has actually been refuted yeah. by uh, current uh, contemporary neuroscience. Yep. And that same, the same um, neuroscientific research today that has refuted Freud has at the same time vindicated the church's ascetical teachings. Mm -hmm. So in other words, the Germans are citing uh, outdated. It isn't the Bible that's outdated. It's the it's the silly Freudian psychology yeah. that these Germans are relying on that's outdated. Yeah. So uh, that's the huge irony. Is it's it, the problem isn't the Bible. The problem is the bad science that these guys are relying on to discredit the church's teachings. That's, yeah, no, that's, that's, kind of, that's definitely a, a fair assessment. Uh, 
uh, Freud's definitely an interesting uh, character. I, I do, I do definitely see some value in reading him and you know, uh, getting gaining familiarity with a few of the concepts he says. But uh, there is a great irony because a lot of empiricists actually can't stand psychoanalysis at all because uh, a lot of them argue that there is no little to no empirical base for you know a lot of these ideas about the subconscious and uh, whatnot. And I, I, I like how you uh, brought up the uh, dopamine levels as far as, you know, if we restrain ourselves, there's actually a greater reward there. Uh, I think it's funny because, you know, a lot of people who attack the church will also cite people like Nietzsche, but even Nietzsche wasn't a hedonist himself entirely. Even he recognized that, you know, a life of just sheer pleasure isn't going to cut it. I mean, for him, it was going a will to power route, which got dark really fast, but even he yes. didn't think that it's just about, you know, constant giving into whatever you know, comes into your life like that. So uh, I, I talk about I talk about both Freud and Nietzsche in the second book that I wrote mm. uh, called Confronting the Pope of Suspicion, because John Paul II has a section in his Theology of the Body where he talks about the masters of suspicion, uh, Freud, Marx and Nietzsche. Yes. And it's very interesting what he has to say about their accounts of human nature and how those accounts of human nature contradicted what the church taught about about human nature. It's a, uh, it's very interesting, but yes, you're right to bring up Nietzsche also. Yeah. I mean, people just tend to associate, you know, this is secularism. This is the faith, but within both the faith and secularism, there's people duking it out and, you know, to really yes. generically pit them against each other. It really doesn't even make sense because there's not even a consensus on the human condition at all. I, I suppose that's one of the problems with a lot of uh, individualism and liberalism is there isn't really a respect for tradition like that that the church has um, among its own faith or is supposed to have among yes. its own faithful like that. 